Hello and welcome to this very special bonus edition of the Buy Bomb Wrestling Podcast, the show that is for the fans, by the fans. I am your phenomenal host, Mr. Podcasting, Chris Belcher. You can follow me at Chris Belcher 24 on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The show is at PBW Podcast on all those platforms as well, so make sure that you check us out. I know this is weird that we are coming to you twice in one week, but there was just so much wrestling content this week. We wanted to make sure to bring all of it to you. I know we mentioned in our pod on Wednesday that we were a little bit pressed for time. Well, due to our recording schedule, we were pressed for time. So there was a lot of stuff that we cut out that we got together almost immediately and said, you know what? We need to record another podcast. We need to get some bonus content out this week because there's just so much to talk about. So could not do this by myself. Obviously, with me is the young buck. Ladies and gentlemen, the Andy Darling, Andy York is here. Andy. Got some bonus content for our listeners this week. It has been such a busy week in the world of wrestling. Yeah, you can't you can't have too much of the Pipe Bomb Wrestling podcast. So I, the more the better, in in my opinion. We're gonna That's go right. the WWE route. The the more <clears throat> entertainment, you know, quantity right. quality is always there for us, but quantity <laughs> is there as, now as well. So <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, we talked about it on the podcast. There's just so much going on this week, and there was so much that we didn't get to. Uh, we immediately texted, uh, not even 12 hours after we recorded, and we're like, we have to do another show. Yeah. Like, we just have to. Yeah. Um, but full disclosure, we were going to try to get this out yesterday. Didn't happen. One of us got the Rona. Um, <laughs> so first time I've gotten it. So uh, that kind of sent me for a tailspin yesterday. But we are here today. Uh, we're going to get this up. I know SmackDown is tonight if you're listening to this on a Friday, but we are going to get this up in time for you to listen to that. But we also postponed it today because we thought we would catch you up on everything current AEW. So I think that's a good call. So, man, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. We'll start with WWE, the stuff on Monday Night Raw that we missed. Um, we talked about the greatness that has been Brock Lesnar, and we talked about how great he has been since he's been back, and even that Paul Heyman really hasn't slowed him down. Brock's still been Brock. But the we did not mention the promo with Bobby Lashley on Monday Night Raw. I'm not normally a fan of Bobby's promos, but this one was okay. But what? What made it tolerable for me is Brock. Yeah. Brock being Brock and Brock telling a knock knock joke. How fantastic was that? <laughs> it was funny too. Like I was expecting like maybe some stupid meathead knock knock joke that's kind of been hit not his thing, but that that wouldn't mm-hmm. have shocked me at all. And it was f- hilarious. I mean, it was hilarious to see that. I love this side of Brock that we I don't think we've ever seen. Um, or if we haven't seen it, it's been a very, very long time since we've seen it. Probably like 2002 was his yeah. first run. So probably since then is like the last time we've seen this type of, of Brock Lesnar. I love right. the promo between the two guys. I am so I am so ready for this match. I was I was hoping that it would take place at WrestleMania um, for I think it's a WrestleMania match for sure, but also for some, you know, biased personal reasons as well. I was hoping it would take hmm. place at Mania. But, you know, yeah. I. I I'm I'm very excited to see this match. I think it's going to be a barn burner. I would not shock me in the least if Bobby won. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also think that we are supposed to get Elimination Chamber in between Rumble and Mania this year. So I would not be shocked if he dropped it at, at, at the Elimination Chamber as well. Um, but yeah, I'm, the promo was amazing. Everything about that segment was amazing. Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman together are, are perfect, especially with what they're doing now. Bobby Lashley and MVP. One thing I will say, because I, I was going to mention him on Wednesday's podcast, and like you said, we ran out of time. The only issue I have right now with Bobby Lashley's booking is the stop-start that they keep doing with the Hurt Business. Yes. Like, they brought the Hurt Business back, did nothing together as a group, and then right. they split up again randomly on Raw. So, like, it, yep. it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. If you're facing Brock, I figured you'd want to have some guys in your back pocket to help you. Mm-hmm. Um, and it doesn't really fit with like, it, it kind of fits with Bobby, but not really like it, it doesn't hurt them. It doesn't hurt him to have Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin with them. Um, and so that's probably my only gripe or complaint so far about, about the whole thing. But other than that, the promo was amazing and everything that they've done so far is really, really solid. Yeah. I find it really interesting too, about what they're doing with the hurt business. I don't, um, 
I don't, I don't get it. It's like Bobby used them to get to the title, and then he doesn't need them to help him keep the title. Like, yeah, it doesn't. It's make normally, sense. The, it's only the other way around. It's normally like I don't need your help getting to the title, but I surely need your help keeping it. You know what I mean? Yep. So that's, I don't know. It's really, it's kind of strange. Um, but yeah, I, I'll be interested to see which way this goes. Uh, either Brock or Bobby. I don't think I'll be disappointed. Either way, you know, if Brock drops oh, no. the belt to Bobby, that'll be fine. If, you know, Brock keeps the belt, okay, then then that'll be fine too because that'll, again, create more questions than answers because obviously if Bobby wins, we're going to get Brock Roman for the other championship at WrestleMania. But if Brock right. wins, okay, now now we've got some questions. So we'll yep. see what happens with that. Um, I, yeah, I figure we're probably going to see some sort of Hurt Business versus Bobby Lashley handicap match on Raw this week. Some sort of something like that, or at least in the coming weeks. Yeah. Uh, it'd be interesting if we got a Brock and Bobby tag team match against the Hurt Business. Oh, my business. gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I would love that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That would that would be so funny. Um, <laughs> I, just, I just popped myself thinking about that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, let's move on to something else that we didn't talk about, and I can't believe we didn't talk about it, actually, is the return of Alexa Bliss. Uh, it was a big deal. Um, well, let me say it wasn't a big, the segment itself wasn't a big deal, but the fact that she's making her way back is a big deal. Uh, what was your thoughts on the segment? Are you okay with it? Or did it kind of miss for you? What was your thoughts? Um, it, it definitely felt like a miss for me. Um, it, it, cause the whole, the whole segment was just weird. I'm, I'm totally fine. If you're going to continue to do this, creepy version of alexa bliss i think it sure. could work i think it i think it could be completely fine the segment itself though did not work very well for me hmm. um i didn't i don't know if it was supposed to be funny or scary or whatever but it, it right. just none of it really landed with me um i'm very excited to see her back i'm excited to see what she can do um i would i would love if uh lily became her like uh what was it may 19th May 19th for Kane or something like that. That would be yeah. Anytime somebody said Lily, if she just snapped, even like if she went back to a normal Alexa bliss and somebody said it and all of a sudden she snapped or something like that, Dude. that would be, that would be fine. Um, that is, me. that is amazing. booking. <laughs> so, because the next question I was going to ask you was like, does it make you, it clearly seems like we're staying with this scary Bray Wyatt esque version of Alexa right. bliss. Does it make you upset at all that we're not returning to the old goddess Five Feet of Fury Alexa Bliss? Which it does me because mm-hmm. I feel like that she was, she's such a good, she's so underrated at that point. Like yep. so many people gave her so much crap, but she was clearly one of the best characters in the yep. women's division. Yep. Um, but dude, that is perfect booking. <laughs> if you somehow got her through these therapy things mm-hmm. and you turned her back into the goddess, but then there was Lily or some sort of trigger that happened. Yep. She just snaps, dude. That's amazing. I love that. Yeah, and I, I think you could do, cause obviously we've seen, I mean, cheap plug, go listen to our, our Monday episode of last week. Like you could do these multiple personalities with Alexa bliss yeah, and it would be fine. And it would, it would sort of make sense kind of storyline wise. I don't know necessarily how you're going to get around how she became this evil demon character without, kind of bringing up Bray Wyatt in some ways. Right. Um, but, you know, I think it would be very interesting to see her have these multiple personalities or these two different gimmicks going on at the same time. I, I really miss the goddess Alexa Bliss. I think she was one of the few that didn't do much in NXT, got caught up to the main roster and just took off, like, out she of sure nowhere. Yeah. Um, and rightfully so, she is... She is one of the most consistent women on the roster. Um, I'm not going to say necessarily she's one of the best technical wrestlers, but she's one of the most consistent. A lot of ways, she's like The Miz. She's very consistent. She's not flashy in a lot of ways, but she is very consistent Mm -hmm. from bell to bell. Outside of the ring, she might be one of the best, if not the best, promos um, outside of maybe a Becky, maybe a Sasha, maybe a Bailey. Um, I'm not too big on Charlotte promos very much, but... I think I think she's like right up there with them for promos as well. So I think you could find a gap between the two of them. But if they're going to go with this scary Alexa version, um, you've got to make it 
you've got to make it mean more. You've got to make it hit harder. You've got to you've got to do something different than a crazy person throwing a, ten, a temper tantrum. And that's really all I got from the from the segment. Well, you also have to make it somewhat separate from Bray Wyatt. Like yeah. we all, all of us, no matter what you're trying to condition us to or not, we are all conditioned to the fact that this spawned from the fiend. Yeah, this came from Bray Wyatt. Okay. So now how do you make this her own character without, like you said, how are you going to explain how she got here? Well, we need to figure that out. Yeah. So if you can figure that out and you can latch onto it and you can make it make sense and make it impactful. Okay. Let's run with it. Right. But if you're just trying to, you know, just put pick crap. up where you left off. Exactly. If you're yep. just trying to pick up the pieces and, and super glue them all back together, it's not going to work. No, you know, no, it's not. So we just got to figure that out. And and like you were saying, she wasn't the most technical wrestler. I think she's the best women's promo in the business. Bar none. Case yeah. closed out of anybody. I think she's number one. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Becky's great. I think Sasha's great. I think Bailey has finally come into her own, but I still think Alexa's better than all of them. But I think what set Alexa apart, what a lot of people talk about, is no, she's not the most technical wrestler. No, she's not the most athletic. No, she's not the most flashy. She knows her limits. Yep. She knows what she can do, what she can't do, and what she's really good at, and she sticks with it. Yep. To me, that's why she's so good. Yep, absolutely. That's, I completely that's just, agree. That's just my opinion. Okay, let's talk about... One of my favorite wrestlers of all time, and I can't believe we did not even talk about this guy on Monday. Again, we ran out of time. But AJ Styles, we've been clamoring for him to get back into the singles division for a long time now, and he had two incredible singles matches this week on Raw against Austin Theory, which ended in DQ. But, man, that match had some – that match was going somewhere had it not ended in DQ. And then a great, great match with Grayson Waller on NXT 2.0. If you guys, I know that we don't talk about NXT 2.0 too much on the show right now. Um, and, uh, but I recommend go out of your way, watch this match. It was so good, man. And I'm so glad that AJ didn't lose either of these matches. It was really good to see him be able to show what he can do, put over younger talent and not have to lose. Yeah, I I completely agree. I think this was the best case scenario for AJ kind of after this whole Omos thing um, is to put him in the ring with these two younger guys. I think it's still very weird that AJ Styles went down to NXT um, to do this feud with Grayson Grayson Waller. I don't know if it was the plan the whole time or or if they were just like, well, we need to get more views on NXT or blah, 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 whatever. But, um, you know, I... Both were great matches. Both got over Austin Theory and Grayson Waller without making AJ look weak, which WWE kind of struggles with at times of putting over younger talent without making the person that's putting them over look stupid or weak or something. So I, you know, it was a great way to put somebody over while also winning the match as well. So I, I completely agree. AJ proved once again why he is one of the best still in the world. Um, he's probably top two, top three. Um, mm-hmm. right now, and one of the greatest of all time, like in ring, one of the greatest of all time, without a doubt. Hundred percent agree. And to hear more on that, ladies and gentlemen, coming up on Monday, this <laughs> seems like a perfect time to plug this. The Mount Rushmore of professional wrestling. You will hear mine. You will hear from Andy. You will also hear from my dad, Billy Belcher, and from my brother from another mother, Jared Justice. Yes, a fatal four way for your listening, uh, your listening ears. And your viewing eyes, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you check it out. It's coming on Monday. You don't want to miss it. Will AJ make any of our Mount Rushmores? How close will he get? Uh, only time will tell. We're going to find out coming up on Monday. But, I I mean, everybody knows here I'm an AJ fanboy. I mean, look behind me. There's, there's right, right <laughs> there. That's AJ right there. I've got yeah. plenty of more AJ figures right over there. I've got a picture of me and AJ right over there. Um, I have an AJ Styles hat hanging right here out of camera. Right there it is. Um, So, I mean, I'm a fanboy. What can I say? You know, so I can't say I can't add any more than what you did other than it was great for him to be able to continue to showcase. And maybe this was a thing where like he volunteered to do it or Grayson Waller wanted to wrestle him or what have you. I, I don't know. Again, I'm just glad 
AJ is coming off of getting squashed by Omos. So right. I'm glad that he was able to pick up at least one win. Austin Theory was a DQ, but anyway, nonetheless, man, I just could not get over the fact that I know that the NXT crowd uh, was very appreciative of AJ being there, but dude, they were in that match the whole time. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. great. It was great to see them so engaged. It felt like, you know, on Wednesday's episode, if you missed it, go back and listen to it because we hit Andy Stark 97 moment. We were talking about all of these black and the gold matches. Black and gold NXT. <laughs> we were talking about black and gold NXT and all these great matches. Yeah. This felt like a takeover match. Yeah. It yeah, really it really did. did. I, uh, <clears throat> I'm, you know, it was one of those times where it felt like the old NXT was kind of back. Um, even though in my heart, I knew it was still dead and gone. Thanks to Vince. But, um, you know, I, it, it was very, it was great to see that. I would love for AJ Styles to be added to maybe the elimination chamber. And maybe he walks away with the WWE championship after the mm. elimination chamber, go into WrestleMania WWE champion, maybe his last one, one of his last ones, because his contract is kind of running out and not running out, but he's, he's getting, to the point where we're he's not going to be full time, and so this may yep. be one of the last WrestleManias where he gets to be maybe WWE champion. Yep. AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens for the WWE Championship would be fantastic. AJ Styles versus Edge for the WWE Championship would be amazing. Mm, money. AJ Styles versus Finn Balor for the WWE. I mean, you could go on and on and on with all the potential WrestleMania moments, and just this time, even though it's two days, either let him main event night one or let him just open one of the shows because yep. I can promise you. It'll be the best match yeah, on the card. <laughs> I feel I feel like within the next three years, because both these guys are at a similar point in their career and age, we need to get AJ versus Finn at Mania. Like yes. I just feel I That's just feel like it, match. it has to happen. Absolutely, we've only seen it once. Yep, and it was a barn burner. Yeah, and, and it, it was, was an last accidental. Minute. It, it wasn't exactly. accidental, but it was thrown together last minute, like you said. So, um, speaking of elimination chamber, not to go too far down a rabbit hole. I don't know if you've read the news that's coming out or not, but it seems like Chamber is going to be in Saudi this year. Um, not the whole show. It looks like they're going to do a chamber match in Saudi for the February Saudi show. Okay, so. Um, and there's all kinds of speculation about name change because of being politically correct and all that other, you know, kind of stuff. But I, I, th it's all speculation at this point. Right. Apparently, Dave Meltzer said something stuck his foot in his mouth and had to apologize for it. Um, so for those of you who might not be up on that news, go read it. I think that's a discussion for next week. So we'll see how that fleshes out. But uh, that being said, a couple more things from Monday Night Raw. Man, Raw was so loaded. Uh, we mentioned Dewdrop on Wednesday, becoming the number one contender. The other action from the women's division, we finally see the breakup of Nikki A.S.H. and Rhea Ripley. You've got Nikki turning, which was kind of expected when you thought about it because mm -hmm. it's like, well, Rhea seems to be the one that would turn, so you got Nikki. Any comment on that or that situation or anything like that? Um, I think it's more intriguing with Nikki turning on Rhea than the other way around. Mm -hmm. Um, it, if it leads to the old Nikki Cross from Sanity coming back, then there you go. I am totally fine with it because that was an amazing character that she worked really well with. Um, which is part of my whole Star K ninety seven version of how did <laughs> Sanity not work on the main roster <laughs> at all? But no. um, I you know I I think if you, it's leading to that, I think it's great. Maybe we're getting Rhea versus Nikki at Mania this year or something like that. That would not totally shock me as well. And then after that, let them go their separate ways and yep. let Rhea be re-entered re back into the main uh, main event scene of, of Raw Women's Championship because Becky versus Rhea would be a lot of fun to see that. Um, at Mania. Well, at that's, Mania. A, that's a Mania match. That you is. Know? And so I, I think we might be getting that maybe Money in the Bank. Maybe even SummerSlam. Like Maybe I think SummerSlam. you can get that there as well if Becky yep. is still champion, which more than likely she will be, but I have no uh, idea what to expect. <laughs> I don't know if she will be or not. Only time will tell. Uh, one more thing for Monday Night Raw that I want to get to that we glossed over. It's very important that we talk about this. Again, we just ran out of time on Monday. So we much did. good stuff. The Alpha Academy becoming the Raw Tag Team Champions. First of all, Man, we've speculated this for a while. It seems to be the beginning of the end for RK Bro. Um, it's kind of this pattern of they've been champions for I a wore long my time. Shirt in in remembrance of their 
we're all so tag glad, team championship. I'm so glad you did. Title. Um, but they lose the titles. They're probably going to get a shot at the Rumble. Maybe the pre-show, maybe the night after the Rumble. They'll get their shot. They'll lose again, and then we'll see slowly the you know the breakup yep. of the two. Uh, obviously, that seems to be where we're headed, don't you think? More than likely. I, honestly, I could see them losing the rematch on the pre-show and then Riddle maybe accidentally eliminating Randy in the Rumble, maybe the other way around, something like that. I don't know. Yeah. And then the next night on Raw, maybe the turn, or maybe they, you know, maybe they hold it out until after the Saudi show. And then after the Saudi show, then they they really go for the turn. Because this is, I think, Riddle versus Randy is definitely headed to Mania. Um, well, it, yeah, because in a weird Rumble, way, it kind of feels like a Mania match in, 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 in some aspects. Well, Rumble is at the end of January. So right. it's like January the 29th or something like that. I think the Saudi show, I think I read, is February the 19th. It's on a Saturday. So yeah. they could they could hold it out and do the rematch for the tag titles at the Saudi the show. Saudi, yeah. And then go to Mania. Because <clears throat> you could that. still do the elimination thing at the Rumble. Cause a lot of tension there. Yes. And then maybe Riddle cost them at the Saudi show. Randy goes yes. ballistic. I yes. just, my thing is, I don't. I want the turn to happen on a raw or yeah. in the States. I don't want to necessarily happen in Saudi Arabia. Um, Cause I don't think it'll hit as hard if it doesn't happen. Like absolutely. A friend, a friend, a, uh, what was it? Kevin Owens did a festival of friendship or like yep. friendship, a festival, something like that. Like festival I, of friendship. Yep. Yeah. I think it would mean a lot more and lead a lot more to that. I would love it. If Matt Riddle did all like it did a celebration to say he's sorry to Randy mid celebration turns on Randy. Like I think that yeah. would be very interesting. A Hill Matt Riddle, I don't know how it would work, but I think it would be really fun to see that aspect. That would be very, very interesting because Randy is one of those guys, like at this point in his career, it's gonna be hard to make him so hated. You know? Yeah, um they because... did it really well with Edge. They made it they made it very he was very hateable when it came to Edge, but that's just because we hadn't Edge. seen Edge in so long. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, but let's flip over to the other side. Let's look at the Alpha Academy because this is a this is a really interesting story that I don't think a lot of people know about. Um, they're not just some one off tag team. Apparently, according to the social media post that Chad Gable made after the match, these guys have been best friends for a long, long time. Like they trained for the Olympics together in 2011 um, when they got. Uh, called up to you know, when they got moved over to Raw, Chad Gable apparently jokingly told Otis there was a house for sale up the street from him <laughs> if he wanted to move in. Within days, Otis put in an offer and he was there in a few weeks. These guys train together all the time. That's awesome. their best friends. I mean, like, newfound respect for those guys. That's awesome. That's really cool. Chad Gable is one of those guys that might be because we'd say i say this about a lot of people i feel like but i feel like chad gable is one of those guys that might be one of the most underrated performers in all of wwe in all of professional wrestling like he yeah. is like could potentially i'm not saying he he is this definitely but if you got right behind him he could have been this generation's version of kurt angle like he could oh, have been that version of kurt angle that you know, we kind of been missing for a while. So I think that would have been really interesting. This is just a, a great story. I love Otis so much. Yep. Him and he was the best part of heavy machinery. Um, no offense to Tucker, but he was the most charismatic. Sure. He was the funny guy. He was shocking in the ring of, with, with some of the stuff that he could do as well. So the two of them together, Alpha Academy has been one of those. When we first heard about it, we were like, eh, that's stupid. You broke up heavy machinery. Right. Just to kind of put these two together, but in hindsight, it was probably the best decision for both yep. of them. I mean, Gable and Jordan, uh, the original American American Alpha, Alpha was amazing. One of my favorite oh tag my teams. Gosh. They were so good. And then when Jordan got hurt, I mean, they'd split them up beforehand, but when Jordan got hurt, then you put Benjamin with Gable, and that was great. Yeah. Not a lot of people remember that. That was great. And then you and had then you, brought, uh, you had Rude and Gable for a while. I forgot about Rude. Yeah, man, <laughs> Rude. Bobby Rudin. Jeez. And then you bring in Otis, which we all kind of scratched our heads about because Otis was so great yeah. with his comedic side. Of it. Like you just mentioned, would it have been great if they would have brought in Kurt Angle 
to mentor these two I know. like as I know. they are now. And then you combine the comedic side of Otis and Kurt Angle. Oh, I know. Oh, my gosh. Well, th- that was part of my whole thing with a when they split up American Alpha in the first place is like you could have brought in Kurt Angle to be the mentor yep. of American Alpha. Yep. And Chad Gable's hilarious. Like Chad Gable's a funny guy. The two of them yeah. together would have been perfect. Jason Jordan would have gotten over more with the crowd probably in, in that mm-hmm. sense because I was unfortunately in the building the night of the big reveal. Me too. Um, and yeah, I was fully Awful. expecting I was expecting Dixon Carter <laughs> to be real honest. That that would have been like the big shock. I would have popped more for oh Dixon Carter gosh. than Jason Jordan if that I'm gonna be insane. a thousand percent honest. Um but yeah, like that, the whole storyline didn't really make a whole lot of sense. And no. I think American Alpha, like you said, one of the best tag teams in NXT history may be the yes. best. I think they're up there. With, uh, I think top the revival three. is the revival's up there. DIY is up there. Undisputed Era is up there. AOP. AOP is up there. The War Viking Raiders. Ra- yeah. War Raiders are up there. The Ascension. Like everybody forgets that the Ascension were like a dominant tag team in NXT and they were awesome in NXT. Yeah. Like they were awesome in NXT. Um, so that just goes to show that NXT knew how to do tag team wrestling anyways. Um, I, but yeah, I, I, I love this new direction that they're going with American out or with, uh, uh, Alpha, Alpha Academy. Academy. Um, rightfully so being we're all tag team champions, hold the belts for a while. Um, I just, I feel like we need more personality out of them. Like, yeah. I feel like we need to understand like, if I would have known this story about them before now, I would have gotten behind them a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I feel like, not that we need this specific story, but we need to know why we need to care about these guys. Even though they're heels, we need they, to know about They them. could be one of the biggest, if not the biggest, tag team baby faces on Raw. <laughs> like, they could be that very simple. Because Otis, you saw with Heavy Machinery, is a very lovable guy like yeah. everybody gets behind him yeah. chad gable gets the crowd over with his wrestling so like and his personality so both of those together they could be you know the next rk bro in a lot of ways yeah. of being the faces of the the baby faces of that division yep. um and so i think you know after this rk bro turn i wouldn't be shocked if we started to see that face turn happening over time mm-hmm. um to build them up in that direction i mean i see these guys as like the steiner brothers I think that's, I mean, I think that's perfect (laughs) for them. It's just, that's right up their alley. All right. If you are just now checking us out, welcome to your bonus edition this week of the Pie Bomb Wrestling Podcast, a show that is for the fans, by the fans. My name's Chris Belcher. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, whether you're listening on SportsWire Radio, on a traditional audio format, or whether you're watching us on BodySlam.net's YouTube channel. Thanks so much for doing that. Again, we apologize for not getting this episode out sooner this week. We know some of this stuff is a little bit old news. We got SmackDown coming up tonight, but we wanted to catch you up, give you our thoughts on a loaded Monday Night Raw, and give you our thoughts on what happened on AEW Dynamite this past Wednesday. Of course, with me as always is my co-host, the young buck, Mr. Andy York. And man, before we get to AEW Dynamite, uh, I cannot believe we failed to acknowledge this big Impact Wrestling signee Big news out of the world of Impact this weekend. Tom Hannafin, formerly known as Tom Phillips, is now the voice of Impact Wrestling. And we have talked extensively on this podcast about how AEW needed to scoop this guy up. And it didn't happen. Big mistake. uh, A loss for AEW, but a huge game for Impact, man. What a good signing for them. Yeah, I think think him going to Impact, you know... Not necessarily that he needs this, but I think him going to Impact is another stepping point for him in a lot of ways. Um, I think this is a good, great place for him to kind of hone in on his abilities without somebody like Vince in his ears screaming and yelling, um, and without him having to make pop culture references and everything else that they were kind of forced to do. Just him being him, I think he's going to grow. I think he is an amazing commentator. He was amazing in NXT. He was amazing on Monday Night Raw. Um, him and Corey Graves together were just yep. amazing, like awesome to listen to. It was easy to listen to him. Um, and so, you know, great for him. Great for impact. Impact has had an amazing week this past week of just blowing everybody out of the water and, you know, just doing an awesome thing. So, 
um, kudos to both of them for for coming together and doing this, man. It's it's going to be awesome to hear him on Impact. It really is. And um, if you listen to his interview with Renee Young or Renee Paquette on oral sessions, it's really insightful. And he said mm-hmm. that this deal only happened within the last month or so. Yep. Um, so really good insight. And you mentioned him and Corey Graves. He talks about their time in NXT together being the best time of his career as far as commentary goes. Mm-hmm. Um, so he just talks about all the cool things that he got to do in WWE. Doesn't say a bad word about WWE. Um, not that he should or he shouldn't just right. saying that he is very grateful for his time there and what it taught him. And he feels like he really can do anything yeah. in the sports entertainment or just sports world in general. Yeah. Speaking of Corey Graves though, by the way, I don't know if you saw this or not, or I meant to text you about it. Um, I meant but to put he- this in my notes to bring it up. <laughs> Apparently it. he has been cleared for entering competition, which means the World dude is Rumble, showing up baby. in the rumble. Yep. He is World showing Rumble. up in the rumble. He I really going, hope he, I really hope Byron Saxon Lawler. gets put in. Well, that, but I hope Saxon gets put in. And I hope we get to see Corey Graves versus Byron Saxon. I hope Corey just beats the crap out of that Byron. That would be hilarious. I'm, would I'm be all so for good. that. Um, but yeah, I'm so like I'm I'm happy for Tom. I'm happy for Corey that he got cleared because obviously yep. he has been itching to get back in the ring since he had to retire. And it's just, you know. Everybody forgets how like good of a wrestler Corey was as well. So like I'm I'm really excited to see him get back in the ring. I don't know if I like it or not though, man, because I'm so attached to him as a broadcaster. He is. If it means we get Byron by himself, then I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. I hate <laughs> okay. it. See, I hope put Pat that. on both shows and just let Pat McAfee. That would be run that would WWE be commentary. That would be great, like Corey Graves did for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um. So I want Graves to be calling the Rumble. And his music hit and him get up from the commentary table and get in the rumble. Yes. That's what I want to have. That would yep. be fantastic. Be uh, that's, so that's what I want as well. Everybody would like, everybody would lose it. It'd be yep. so good. All right, let's move on to AEW real quick. A lot of things happened on Dynamite this week. Uh, we saw a couple of debuts. We saw a couple of returns. We saw some interesting things happen. Uh, let's kick off with the opening segment. Um, we see the on-screen alliance now of Adam Cole and Britt Baker. Um, we're going to see a mixed tag match this week with Orange Cassidy and Chris Statlander against those two. Are you okay with them acknowledging? The, I know they've acknowledged their relationship here and there, but are you okay with them putting them together? Uh, do you see it being a permanent thing? Is this a one-off? What's your take on that? Um, I think it's going to be, I, I'm totally fine with it because I, I think it's not necessarily going to be a one-off, but I don't think they're going to be like together all the time. Right. Um, I don't think it's going to be another Becky Seth situation from a couple of years ago. I, I really don't think it's going to be that. I think um, it was really cool to see her come out and make like make the save for Adam Cole. Um, yeah. And I'm really excited to see that that mixed gender tag match on Rampage. Uh, no, on Dynamite next week. Um, uh, yep. I'm, I'm excited to see that as well. So I, I'm totally fine with that. I'm totally fine with the direction that they're going with this. Um, and you know, if she joins the elite or joins this little faction that Adam Cole's got going on, I, I think it would be great as well to kind of have, you know, the young bucks come out with Britt Baker now and like all this different stuff. I think it would be really, really interesting to see that, um, kind of go into it. And then maybe when all the dysfunction starts to happen, when Kenny shows up in probably a couple of weeks, then maybe she's like, you know what? <laughs> I'm out. I'm done. I'm by myself now I'm going back. Yeah. So I think this could be something that happens for a short little while. Um, but you know, I, I, I really enjoyed the segment. I thought it was a great way to start when they do the bucks trying to do the kiss thing. And then Brit and Adam Cole kiss. That was just, that, that was, was icing funny. on the cake. So that yeah, really I, I loved it. Uh, see, I'm okay with it to an extent. Like, I don't feel like Brit needs this. No, I feel like if Brit was sort of floundering or whatever, then, okay, cool. Let's, let's hitch her to this wagon. Maybe <laughs> when she loses the women's title eventually, I mean, we all yep. hope that doesn't happen, but if she does, <laughs> Then maybe put her in here full time. Yeah. Uh, but I just I kind of hope it's a one off, man. Like like yeah. you said, there everybody knows they're together. We've acknowledged it. They don't have to be together on screen all the time. Right. Uh, but I do think it's cool. And I think there's a place for it. Like in this there segment is. with Orange Cassidy and with the best friends and with Chris Statlander, it only makes sense for Britt Baker to get involved now. Like right. it makes sense for her to get involved with this. So I, I think that is. That is totally fine. I think yep. if Adam Cole ever gets into a feud with another wrestler that has like a 
female manager or whatever, like Britt Baker comes out for that Absolutely. as well. Like stuff like that, I think is totally yep. fine. I think it would be great if Adam Cole escorted Britt Baker to the ring every once in a while. Like for yep. her big matches, he's out there to support her and be with her. I think it's stuff like subtle things like that where they don't have to be together all the time. But for the big stuff, for the big moments being together, I think that would be really cool. Yep, I think that would be very cool too. Uh, we also saw the return of Lance Archer for the first time since he fell on his head. Yeah. In the, uh, I think it was the uh, Eliminator Tournament. Yes. Uh, for, yes, that, yep. uh, that Brian Danielson won. That's right. Uh, so Lance Archer returns and he attacks Hangman Adam Page. Uh, very, very interesting. It's a great opponent, I think, for Hangman. Oh, yeah. I just hope Lance is not affiliated with Dan Lambert. I really think that would be a mistake. I don't think he will be. I think it was just a great uh a great distraction. Yeah. For like Lance Archer came out here to attack Dan Lambert. Oh no, he's going after Hangman. I think that's totally right. fine. Bring back Jake and put those two together. I love the I love the two together. Lance Archer and Jake Roberts was amazing together it's really good. um and so i would love to see that i'm so excited for this match i think it's going to be stiff and hard-hitting and mm -hmm. it's going to be brutal and i'm so looking forward to it i don't think it's going to happen at revolution i think it's mm. going to happen in a couple weeks um and then after the match kenny probably comes down to challenge for that title or something but yeah it's well, going to be it's going to be awesome yeah because i was going to say it's really interesting because adam cole and the commentators are starting to bring up that he's the number one guy that he's yeah. the number one contender. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how they handle that. I guess I'm I'm with you. I think Archer will happen before Revolution. Yeah. So is it Cole at Revolution? Is this, you know something happen where Kenny comes back and it's a triple threat at Revolution? Is it you know a lot of questions? I know yeah. that's far ahead to speculate. Right. But it, I think it'll be interesting. I think it could be one of those where Adam Cole is saying he's the number one contender. And all of a sudden, Kenny comes back and says, "I deserve, like, I get my rematch. So you have to wait." And yep. then maybe that's when Cole and the Bucks or Cole Fish and and uh, O'Reilly turn and go their own way or do something like that. I think we could lead to that. Um, but I really love, you know, now that the new year has started, all the records have kind of reset, mm -hmm. and it gives you the opportunity to kind of say, "All right, who do we want to put against Hangman Page?" Not like the record thing, but who do we like? Right. Who is going to be the first guy to step up? And I think Lance right. Archer is the perfect pick for this. One more thing to hit with AEW, and then we will close out this bonus podcast. We speculated it for a couple of weeks. We thought we were getting it last week. It didn't happen, but it did happen this past Wednesday. The debut of Brody King, uh, obviously the newest member of the House of Black, yep. uh, debuting in a big way. Andy educate me and our listeners if they're not familiar with Brody King and kind of his affiliation in in a past life with um, Malachi Black or Tommy End or whatever and then just some of his background in general yeah so they Tommy Tommy End Alistair Black Malachi Black whatever you want to call him and Brody King were a tag team together on the independent scene called the Kings of the Black Throne I believe is what their name was um, and they, as you can tell, Brody King is a big boy that is very stiff and just a, a really great tag team wrestler, really great in the ring. Both of these two guys together are just going to be absolute money um, together. We have been, I have been, we've been speculating for it on a while, for a while now. Now that he's here, I think we're off to the races. I think they more than likely will be tag champs by Revolution. Maybe or at Revolution. they win it at Revolution. Maybe they win a little bit after. Um, but yeah, it's this is going to shake things up in AEW with the tag team. I think mm -hmm. building the House of Black from here with Brody King, um, I thought it was very, very interesting that um, I just forgot her name. Not Jamie Hayter. Um, she's with uh, the Varsity yeah, Blondes. Yeah, 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 Julia. Julia. I think she might join because yes, she was too. stopping them from attacking me I think too. she might join. I think mm -hmm. you might start to see um, the Butcher and the Blade join. You might see Bunny join. I hope it just becomes this massive faction starting from here that is like a disease that is taking over AEW that someone has to stop, that someone is not Cody Rhodes, so don't even think about that now. Um, <laughs> let it be a Brian Danielson. Like Let Brian Danielson turn face and that be his mission. Let that yeah. be for... Um, Pac or a Jungle Boy or 
somebody like uh, Darby Allen. Let Darby Allen try to like take over and like be this hero or what this anti this uh this uh anti hero or whatever. Like I think that would be really cool. But let this thing grow for a while. Um, but yeah, it's it's it was so cool to see him. He made a massive impact, and I'm I'm so ready to see these two guys together. I think you got to be careful who you would pick to take off the head of the snake, so to speak, yeah. of the House of Black. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because they're going to be popular. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's evident they're going to be popular. So like my first thought was, oh, CM Punk, that'd be great. But yeah. I don't know that you necessarily want to put Punk in that spot, right? You know what I mean? Because yeah. these guys are going to get cheered. Yeah. So I, I don't think it hurts Darby to put him in that spot. I don't think um, Johnny Gargano would be a really good Johnny would guy to good. come in and take over, or come in and kind of go after that. Johnny would be good. I mean, I think you could. Um, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I, it would be good. It's <sighs> Jericho would be a little. Jericho would be weird. Jericho I think it would, would be, be really interesting good. if Jericho got trapped in and joined for a little bit. Like I think that would be like like he Andy was Brian the one that with, tried to yeah. do it, and Aleister Black squashes him, and he joins or something like that would be the one that would make Aleister Black or Malachi Black look even bigger of a deal than he already is because that's something we talked about Wednesday is how do we bring back that prestige a little bit to him, and if he starts taking mm-hmm. out some of these bigger guys to where they kind of drink the Kool Aid for a little bit, mm-hmm. I think that would be really interesting. I think it could be interesting. I know you mentioned not Cody, and I know we don't want to revisit this Cody feud, but I think it'd be interesting if Malachi somehow reels Dustin in yep. and somehow makes that work. Mm-hmm. And Cody tries and he fails, and then you have somebody else come in to save them. Cody's- and then and then I don't I mean, I don't know who it is, but then maybe right. Cody turns on that person. Yeah. And then that kind of separates Malachi and Cody and yeah. gives Cody a reason to, I don't know. It would be, it would not be, don't do this, but it'd be really weird if he was like, Shaq, come take care of this, or Snoop Dogg, come come take care of this. And Snoop, then they join. Come on, Snoop. Let, Snoop, <laughs> let Snoop Dogg join the House of Black. I think that would be, that would be a lot of fun oh to see that. Oh my gosh, that's so interesting. All right, man. Um, that, that, that concludes our coverage, our bonus podcast. Man, it was a lot of fun. We had to catch up on all things wrestling this week I, f- I feel a weight off of my shoulders i feel like we've covered everything now we have left no stone unturned yeah uh, well i, like I will say bit. one last thing i I really en- also enjoyed the cm punk wardlow match i think that was it was definitely i love that for some reason cm punk is doing his best bret hart imitation in a lot of right. these matches because i've seen the clips going around with the same thing of like cm punk and wardlow the same ending between diesel and bret hart Yep, and I, I I think yep. that was really great. Wardlow yep. is about to destroy MJF at some point. Yep. Um, January twelfth would be a really great time for that, to, or January sixteenth would be a really great time for that to happen because AEW is in Nashville, so I'd love to see that live. Um, but I, it's going to be a lot of fun to see that. Uh, CM Punk. Really, this was one of those cases where even though he lost, CM Punk put Wardlow over like crazy yep. in this match, and it it fit really well. I think we're going to see. I don't know. Do we see the implosion of MJF and Wardlow before we see Punk and MJF or I think how? so. Okay. I think I think we're I don't think we see MJF and Punk touch. They may they may scrap, but I don't think they wrestle until Revolution. Um gotcha. but I think on the build up to that, I think Wardlow I think Wardlow's like, Nope, like I'm done with you and then I think Sean Spears is like, you know what? I'm out of here too and then right kind of FTR is off doing their own thing right now. So, right. <laughs> and so okay. I think you're kind of MJF by himself against punk. There we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you have enjoyed this wrestling recap, this bonus podcast that we have presented to you. Um, make sure you follow us on social media at PBW podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Andy is at Andy underscore PBWP. I am at Chris Belcher 24. Make sure you give us a follow. Make sure you give us a like, a subscription, all of those things. Make sure you're supporting Bodyslam.net and all their other great shows as well as Sportswire Radio, uh, our partners in crime. We could not do this without. We appreciate their support as well as your listener support. Thank you so much for doing that. For Mr. Andy York, my name is Chris Belcher. Thanks so much for hanging out with us on a Friday. Don't forget on Monday. 
Fair Justice. My dad, Billy Butcher, will be joining us for the Mount Rushmore of Professional Wrestling, an episode you do not want to miss. This has been the Bye Bomb Wrestling Podcast. We will catch you guys down the road.